Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Blank! Yeah, hell yeah! I also really quick need to mute the sound so we don't get interrupted. First off, brother, how are you? How's how's life? Dude, life's great. Excellent. I'm happy. I haven't been happier. That is awesome. Hell yeah. You look you look fantastic. Uh how was how was the, the finale of the whole run with the uh, original ASD? Dude, uh it, I don't think it could have been any better. Every show is awesome. Um, got to meet so many people that I had talked to over social media for the last 15 years. It was a very emotional year. Um, it's kind of sad that it's coming to an end, but the exciting news, well, not what I'm about to tell you, but Skylet has a bunch of stuff we're going to keep doing next year too, which is really cool. Because we didn't know if it was just going to be uh, a one-year thing, like just for the 15-year reunion, or if we were going to get back together. But uh, we already have a shit ton of music. I just got to get in and get the vocals recorded. So, so, so everything's done, but the vocals, essentially? Majority songs we plan on putting putting out, but we have more than enough. I can tell you that is, and then Nick, Nick's pretty much the primary. He's handling all the production on this one. Yeah. Nick did all the production. Um, so far he's doing all the mixing and everything. That is awesome. Uh, I know uh, you have something you want to tell us, but I have one more Skylar question. Uh, well, we don't know what the news is, but what do you have like a timetable of when we could expect an announcement for for original AST? I imagine obviously 2023, but maybe springtime we get hit with a, a, a news update. I think I think we can plan on early 2023. Early 2023. I love it. We're excited about that. Now, now what brings you here today? I know you have some something massive to tell us. What brings you here today? Well, um, I've been sitting on this for a while and I had to, you know, talk to the the bandmates and um, our manager who's newly signed on with us that will now be taking care of us. Um, bringing back the band Watch Out There's Ghost, which was the band I did after Skylar Drive. We uh, have a 15 year, uh, I guess our album's 15 years old next year. So we're, uh, that's what kind of sparked the interest of wanting to bring the band back. And I didn't know if uh, any of the dudes I was doing it with were going to be interested in it, but everyone was super stoked. And that makes me happy because, you know, I worked really hard on that record and um, I'm glad I'm going to have an opportunity to to share it with more people and get a chance to actually tour on it. That is amazing. Is there, is, so there, there's already dates have been talked about with promoters or that stage that process starts now now that we have the band a okay to the original lineup so yeah now that i have a manager on board um you know it's just a narrowing and who the booking agent's going to be and trying to get as many shows as possible you know i've talked about it multiple times throughout the year you know uh, my recovery and stuff and I find that, that I stay sober when I stay busy and I, I want to just keep fucking working just keep playing shows. And I hope people remember the record. You know, I, I, I it's, I'm, I'm interested to see how many people are going to be pumped as I, as stoked as I am. I mean, I'm literally like shaking, telling people about it because I, I mean, I had such a great time being back with Skylet this year and to know that that's going to keep going. But you know, watch out was like my my project, like my, you know, it was me and a producer, and uh, I worked really hard on it, and I did 250 shows the year it came out, and wow. then, uh, yeah, strangely and oddly got dropped from Rise Records, and never really got an explanation for that, which hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll get that answer soon, but I. I Chat wants to know if DJ DJ Blackard will be involved. 
Um, no, probably not because you know he has a uh, super creep, right? And which is a fucking amazing project, and I know he has a lot of. He has a lot to. He hasn't probably talked about that's going to be happening with his project. So, pay attention to him because I mean that's one of the most talented guys I've made music with. Hell yeah, dude! This is exciting news, man. Fifteen yeah. years, two hundred and fifty shows. That's so cool too. That that ASD is giving you the blessing to you know take some time apart. I imagine you have to do the vocals for the record, then go on the tour so they can finish up the little nuances mixing and stuff. Well, yeah, it's like, it's not, I don't, I don't think it'll take away from, from ASD at all. It's just, I, I need, in order for me to stay sober, I, I need to be busy 24 seven. I don't, my day job is music, you know, like I've never have, have dedicated my life to anything else as much as I have wanting to be on the road and just getting those little weekend tours and playing those festivals this year got me so fucking high that i was like dude i gotta i gotta go full steam next year like i just want to good for you we're, we're proud of you man dude thank you and i mean you guys have helped promote the project the whole this whole year I, we thank you for you know helping us share the news you know we lost all our social medias so the we reached the, all the people we reached was basically through this show and through demo team. Oh yeah, we're we're, we're happy to support. Um, we, you know, couldn't be more proud of you regarding your recovery and your sobriety. That's awesome. I'm excited to hear that you just have that itch all over again to just to music, work, hustle, grind it out. Whatever you got to do, man. Can uh, is there is there a particular place or two that? Watch out! There's ghosts. Has to play. Like maybe you just had such a memorable show so long ago at this particular place that you're telling the promoter or your manager, like you got to get me back at this one place. The fans went ballistic. Japan. I knew you were gonna say Japan, dude. I knew you were gonna say Japan. <laughs> we talked about this before. The Japan fans go crazy. Man, J Japan was was so surreal. I mean, I I didn't hear it and hardly any English for eight days. And I was just still in amazement. I didn't understand what the fuck was going on the whole time. I, I couldn't smoke weed there, so I really couldn't enjoy the food. Um, so this time I'm going to prepare for that. Maybe stop smoking weed a little earlier before I go. So I could, you know, cause I got to try all these different types of sushi. I thought sushi rolls was like sushi, but over in Japan, they give you these bowls of rice and, tempura and you gotta use your chopsticks and kind of break it yourself and make your own big ass bites like they do in anime oh cool so, but if, as far as uh in playing in the states like i i want to play hometown i want to play roseville i want to play sacramento i want to play the whiskey a go-go um nice. san diego i would need to go back to san antonio corpus christi houston uh, New York City, uh, the Gramercy. I would love to play there again. Um, Do you think there's a chance yeah. that that while you guys are on the road, you might consider bringing some some recording equipment and a possible, maybe just one song single for Ghosts comes out in the future? Yeah. See, I think the the we're gonna try to release music way sooner than. We're going to try to have some products by the time we're playing shows. We already have some songs lined up. Uh, the guitar player, his name's Richie. He's up in Chico. So I don't know if he's in the chat right now. I told him to come in and introduce himself. I did um, see a Richie saying, I love you, Jordan. Richie Abelia? Yep, there he is. Okay, shout out to Richie. Yep, so we actually, he was the last guitar player for Watch Out before we stopped uh, doing things before, but... He's been sending me music for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I don't know. I think uh, so. I'm in a uh, like a detox type of house right now. She was trying to get off the pain pills for the because um, I had like cellulitis on my legs, so I kind of had to come in for the treatment. I leave on the six, and I think I'm gonna go right up to the Richies and start recording. Is I need to. I don't want no downtime. Yes. 
is there is there a timetable of when you're gonna make it make it to Nick to knock out uh, a couple of uh, vocals for for ASD? Shit! As soon as I get out of here, too, I already told him. As soon as he's ready for me, he's a busy guy. You know, he runs a, a full full time studio, so he has a lot of. He's working with a lot of amazing bands. Have you checked out Preacher? Yeah, hell yeah! Preacher's playing the whiskey. Uh, in February with a bunch of friends of mine and it's it's on my calendar to go we we had him on the show maybe maybe a month ago for a short interview but uh I didn't know that their their clean singer could get that high vocally Dude, he, he did he did the clean vocals for a reason for broken wings at our re, at our Roseville show I stepped off stage and let him do it wow and it, I, I went into the crowd and I wrought and I stayed in the crowd and and watched it from you know crowd view and he literally blew my mind. That is awesome. Is there is there a particular and uh, JB? I apologize. I just get carried away with me and Jordan kicking for a minute, but uh, uh, I'll let you ask your question too. Is there is there a particular fun moment on the ASD tour that stood out? Like so, a fan went above and beyond and just did something like an out outpour of love. Um, uh, I think the most, the thing that stuck out the most to me this year was when we played the So What Music Festival, which was right after, uh, my fiance passed. I had, it was, t- was kind of walking, walking alone and I went and, because it was at the Texas Rangers Stadium and I just went and picked a random seat, didn't think anyone was going to notice me. And some girl came up and sat next to me and, you know gave me her condolences and we talked about life for a good 30, 40 minutes. And it was amazing to just be able to bond with somebody who had been, you know, supporting me from afar for 15 years. And, you know, we hugged it out. There's so many tears this year, man. It was just, I I didn't expect to have such a, such a, a supportive response of when I announced that I was getting sober. Um, the Reno show is really cool too. And Blue Ridge was, I mean, the funniest fucking shit that happened all year is a guy tricked us to interview us. He pretended to be somebody that we had been talking to through Facebook. And he must've saw that this guy had reached out to us for an interview. This guy pretended to be the guy. He interviewed us in a field for about an hour and he didn't even have the plan. And so the next day when I went back to Blue Ridge to pick up my homegirl, the guy comes up to me and he's like, yo, why'd you guys ghost me? Like we had the interview planned and, uh, what what happened? And and I'm like, nah, I'm like, what's your name? And he told me and I'm like, dude, we did the interview yesterday. And he's like, I promise you, we did not do the interview. And I was like, well, fuck it. Let's do it right now. And so you can see it. It's like a, it's, an interview from Blue Ridge where it's just me and an interview guy. Some kid completely fucking pretended to be somebody else and interviewed us for a goddamn hour. That is crazy. I've never ever heard of anything like that before. That is yeah. wild. Yeah, I think he was wearing a, a one of the late. He had the the Rise hat, the later Skylet Drive record. I think he was a Jag fan, and. Uh, so I mean, kudos. Did to he that ask? Guy. Did he ask like weird questions, or or was it like a normal yeah. interview? He asked all the questions that had already been asked, and you know that that we had already given the answers on this show, in which we were kind of looking at each other like, why are we doing this again? Like we've already given these answers, and uh, it turned out that kid completely was not the fucking kid that was supposed to interview us, but he tricked us and he got his interview. <laughs> That is crazy. Uh, JB, what's what's your question or two you have for Jordan before we let him go? I know he's busy. Yeah, so I know you've been a part of uh, different music, uh, just different music groups and stuff like that. Do you suggest, you know, expanding, expanding yourself and going into like doing multiple things at once? Or do you do you think it it is for the a specific set a person to be able to do that like um sh- sh- do you suggest doing more music projects um or multiple music projects at once basically um i don't know it, I, I guess it 
kind of compare it to like your sex life, you know, to do, is, is it better to have multiple sex partners or one sex partner, which makes you more happy? I mean, that's different. I, uh, that's a good answer. If, you know, I, I don't know if that's the right answer, but the reason why I choose to do why I'm going to take on two is because I, I, I've struggled with sobriety for so long. And, you know, my idle mind will take me to terrible places that I need my friends, my brothers and my bands to keep me straight. Um, it's. I don't know if you have a day job and you have a girlfriend, you know, I've this whole year, I, I pretty much lost all financial like um, responsibilities. I've, I'm homeless. I don't have a girlfriend or any type of bill. So, like, I'm. I'm literally free 24 seven. So that's why I'm wanting to engage in more. And, um, I think that my manager thinks it's a good idea to, to just to stay busy. I, I guess it's just how much, how much you drive you got in you. I mean, I didn't make music for, you know, for years. I haven't released like music in a long time. So now it's just like, it's going to be super cool to put out, the Skylet Drive music with the Skylet Drive guys because we've had this thing going for so long that I've been kind of back. I haven't been able to release what I wanted to release with them years ago. Like when they put out the Wires record, um, you know, I had already had the record written and now it's like we're going to have an opportunity to put out like what would have happened. And then Watch Out There's Ghost, um, you know, is a completely different genre. So it's, it's a di it, I write about different things um, with Watch Out There's Ghosts as I do. I don't know. I think, I think do as much as possible. I mean, well, hold on a second. You hold on a second. You just dropped a jewel, and it, I got to ask a question about this. Uh, hold up. You just said you, you, you had written, written wires, but now we get an opportunity to see what would have happened. So do, does, Nick or somebody in the band own the masters to wires? Oh, no, 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 no. Not not in that sense. I'm talking about since we I was in the band when we wrote the music that became wires. So now that story, because, you know, she watched the sky was, quote unquote, a concept record. And, you know, I created characters in it. And now I get to write the second part of it. Gotcha. So I've been sitting on that story for, you know, 15 years. Joey saved the lyric book. And so it's crazy that, like, looking back on where I was mentally then and then where I am now, and then being able to bring these characters back to life, which is super chill. Um, I love how, how it is characters, too, because it's – You've always told me that it, a Sea Watch of Sky is somewhat of a video game related concept. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Yeah, well, you know, hey, Nightmare, where'd you get your teeth? Like, Nightmare is the nemesis in uh, Soul Calibur. Like, you got, you got Siegfried, he's the good guy, and then Nightmare is the bad guy. And so he has this huge set of teeth on his dick. And that's why it's, you know, that's why I'm asking him where he got his teeth. <laughs> and uh, so which was you know I actually and you know with according to Columbus you know I used the reference of Christopher Columbus and the skyline and stuff you know telling you know the girl that I was in love with to run to keep running for the skyline because it takes place before we know well according to jo according to Joey the, the earth is flat so I mean if you keep running you're just you're never going to you're never going to meet the skyline. So it's kind of, it's the revenge story because I guess like a little spoil alert, obviously she doesn't make it and nightmare is still my nemesis. And now it's like kind of the more aggressive, going to be a heavier record than she watched the sky. Definitely so much heavier, which is crazy. It, it gives me goosebumps listening to it. Nick, Nick wrote some brutal shit. Hell yeah. Heavier. So I imagine Brian's got extra, extra screams for us, ready to go for this one. Um, has he laid down his parts yet? Or or does that? do you start that process first and then 
you tell Brian, oh, this is where you would come in and do your part? Or how how does that how does the back and forth with you guys work when you're when you're recording vocals? Well, when we started um, demoing out for the new stuff, I wasn't um, I wasn't in a you know wasn't in a good spot. So Brian had already started tracking his scream stuff, and yeah, it's brutal. Like I I love Brian's scream, and Corey screaming on it, uh, Corey singing on it. It's so there's going to be a lot. It won't just be me vocally on there, which is awesome. Cause I mean, the EP had Brian and Corey all over it too. Right. So, um, we're definitely, we brought that back out. And so we got the lows, the highs, the mids and, uh, yeah, Brian's still screaming. I didn't, I didn't let him stop. I made him, even though he's a dad, he's still got to scream. <laughs> So I imagine now is about the time where you where people are gonna want to go back to facebook.com slash watch out there's ghosts official and and make sure they're following they've liked the page all that stuff because we will get some updates in the future uh correct is that correct yeah um I would expect within the next week or two we'll have new promos and maybe a couple demo clips of music um I was going to try to do maybe Excellent. the TikTok thing and, you know, do some acapellas and sing the old songs on videos. I've never really done any of that stuff. I've never really sang on camera like that before. So I think I'm going to start doing that with the record to get people familiar with it, try to get some new fans. Cool. I, Rise will 100% copyright this, but so I'll, I was saving it for the end. But of course, I'm going to play a tidbit of the shakeup just to rekindle people's memory. But uh, Jordan, I, I appreciate you stopping in, breaking the news with us, man. That is ginormous. Watch Others Ghost was amazing. I can't believe it did 250 shows in a year. Kudos to you uh, and your uh, just that's just that's just amazing. Uh, but yeah, man, that is exciting. Thank you, Richie, for stopping by and uh, let us know who you are. It's good, sir. We appreciate it. Jordan, we're proud of you and your sobriety, man. Uh, it's going to be worth it. We're really excited about about the tour. We're excited about new ASD. And man, you're just awesome. I love you, dude. Dude, thank you so much for continuing to to give me a chance to to speak to people and to share my side of stories. And it's been a fucking cool year. It's been a dramatic year, but it's been fun. And uh, you know, the us all the boys, you know, we're uh we're stoked to see what the ASD what we know it's going to keep going on. It's just, you know, we're letting the suit and tie people take care of it from now on. I'm just sitting in the background, just letting them know, letting them know I'm ready to sing when they need me. I, I do have one final question. Once, once the, I'm assuming it's going to be EP for ASD, but maybe it's an album. I don't know. But once it's concluded in its, in its recording fashion, like it's completely done, mastered and everything, are you guys going to shop it for to, to labels to, for release or is this going to be completely uh, in, under your control? You know, if it was up to me, I, I, I think I would try DIY just because like, I mean, we're not the we're not the biggest band in the world, but we have like this semi like cult following. Like the people that do love Skyla Drive, ASD, whatever the fuck you want to call it, like there was no drama. There was no confusion. Like we thought there might've been, everybody knew what it was. They supported us. They didn't ask questions. And, uh, you know, it was, I couldn't have asked for a better turnout of at the shows and people wanting new music is cool. Um, I want to get it out as soon as possible. And I know Nick does too. I, they're hounding me all the time to get down there. So I got to, I just, I, I just want it to live up to the, she watched the sky because, you know, we waited 15 years to release it. So I, it has to, it has to live up to it, which I think it will. I know musically it, it has. So locally I gotta, I gotta put my big boy britches on and uh, try some new things and see what I can come up with. You got this. We'll be ready. Hell yeah. Well, Jordan, we'll let you go, sir. But as usual, we appreciate you, uh, We'll see you soon. I hope with with some more updates. But man, we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit with uh, with a little bit of the shakeup. Have a fantastic day, brother, and we'll chat we'll chat soon. Yeah, and congratulations on twenty thousand subscribers. Hey, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Thank you. Fuck yeah, dude. Daily thank grinding, you, ladies and gentlemen. You, Jordan. Jordan Blake. Give me a hell yeah. Adios.